So next, we're going to position for our first coronal oblique. Bring over our coronal oblique. Oops. Open it up. And right off the bat, I'm just going to hit right mouse click. Oh, let me shut that off. I'm going to hit right mouse click perpendicular. So I'm now perpendicular to my axial image. Bring it over. Come up to my supraspinatus tendon. And we will angle parallel with the supraspinatus tendon. Okay. Once I angle parallel with the supraspinatus tendon, I'm going to come here and bring up my coronal localizer. My field of view, I'm going to position right in the middle of the shoulder joint. Now, depending on what machine you're on, will determine what size field of view you're using. 16 field of view, someone her size, this is, I have plenty of anatomy covering my, within my field of view. Um, so I'm able to position right in the middle of the, of the glenohumeral joint. But you obviously want to make sure that you get from above the AC joint to probably mid-axilla. So there's my field of view. Now coverage, anteriorly you want to be to the coracoid process. And posteriorly, you want to be a few slices posterior to where you see the humerus. And that will ensure that you're covering the subscapularis muscle. Excuse me, not subscapularis. Um, the infraspinatus and the teres minor muscle. Subscapularis is anterior. <laughs> um, anyway, you're going to want to make sure that you're covering anteriorly from the coracoid process to a few slices behind where you see the humerus so that you're covering the infraspinatus and the teres minor muscle. And that's it. Okay, this scan's gonna run for four minutes. Okay, so while the coronal oblique T2 is running, we're going to copy our coronal oblique T1. Simply to the... And occasionally, depending on the scanner, the slice thickness and distance factor will be different for shoulder imaging. So I always copy to the default first, and then double-click the coronal oblique T2s and see what these are at. So these are at three, skip 10%. These are also three, skip 10%. So here we can change these to the 22 slices to match. Okay, and then we'll run that. Next scan is two and a half minutes. And while that's running, we'll position for our sagittal obliques. We do two sets of sagittal obliques. Uh, the first one is to evaluate the shoulder joint and the rotator cuff, and that's the sagittal oblique T2 fat sat. So I'm going to show you a little trick. This is really the easiest way to position. Open it up, copy it to your coronal, which gives you your parallel line to the supraspinatus tendon. But for sagittal imaging, we want to be perpendicular to the supraspinatus tendon. So the easiest way to do it is to copy it to your coronal and then immediately go to protocol, turn group. And now it puts it 90 degrees perpendicular to your supraspinatus tendon. Okay. So on my axial image, I want to cover from just about mid scapular spine to the deltoid muscle. You don't need to be through the entire deltoid muscle, but you want to be covering at least to the deltoid muscle. So as you can see here, we need a few slices. And that should be adequate coverage. On your sagittal localizer, you can bring your field of view down a tiny bit. Again, you want to make sure that you, depending on the size of the field of view, that you always include uh, the superior part of the shoulder. And if you want to angle your field of view, 
That way the image comes up upright, straight, you can. And then we're going to apply that. Our Sag Oblique T1, you can bring it over and now copy that to the Sag Oblique T2, simply for the angle. The purpose of this scan is to look at muscle atrophy around the shoulder girdle. So our most lateral slice, we can put right at the edge of the humerus, but we want to cover as medially of the scapula as we can, and that shoulder coil signal will give us. So here we can add a few slices. So again, we're going to cover from the edge of the humerus as medially as possible. We're starting to lose signal here, so I'm not going to worry about covering any more medially. And then apply that. And we can look at our coronals. We have Miranda, you doing okay? Yes. Okay. Next one's four and a half minutes. So here's our coronal T2 fat set. Here's our coronal oblique T1s.